All right, I'm coming to you today from our um, house lot. We, are, uh, we bought this lot uh, four years ago in 2015. Um, I'm filming today, it's in August of 2019. Um, anyway, we're building a uh, just a small house, uh, about 1,500 square foot house on three acres. Um, sort of a uh, downsizing effort, uh, as a lot of people do once they're uh, they get a little older and they uh, they don't want as much property to take care of. Um, this house is uh, a little more than half the size of the house that we live in today. And uh, so we uh, we bought the lot, like I said, uh, four years ago. Uh, we really didn't do much with it for the first few years. Um, back last fall, I guess we had it brush hogged. My buddy came in and brush hogged it, and uh, just so we could see, you know, there was weeds growing up and sticks and branches and. And uh, so he cleaned it up for us. Uh, this spring, um, winter and spring, we got our house plan done. We worked through all that. That was a couple of months of back and forth and changes and deciding exactly what we wanted and what was important to us and what wasn't. And if that's something, um, if anyone out there is going through this, I would, my biggest piece of advice, this is the second house that I've built from scratch that came out of my head, was uh, take your time with your design. Uh, don't feel like you're burdening your designer with emails and visits and phone calls. And you're going to live in this house for a long time and it's going to cost you a lot of money to build it. Um, and changes after the fact are so much harder than changes before uh, you break ground. So we, um, we have been collecting ideas for our house for years. I'll show you the house plan in a, another video in the future, but right now let me show you the plan for the uh, the land itself, because that's what we're working on, is cleaning up the lot, getting all the uh, sticks and weeds and uh, rocks. My word, are there rocks on this lot? Uh, getting all the rocks cleaned up. Um, where we're at in the process now is that we've gone through the zoning department. We have a zoning permit. We have a building permit for the house. We do not yet have a building permit for our outbuilding, which will be a, a garage. But we're working on that plan right now. We're going through that uh, process of getting uh, engineered plans for the building department. So we should have those in the next couple of weeks, and then uh, then we'll be all set. We could break ground on the house today if we wanted. But um, uh, well, so let me show you the uh, the land, the plot plan, the survey, um, and I'll show you where everything's going to be. So, um, like I said, it's three and a half acres. This is three acres, and then there's this piece of land here that is a so this is a flag lot, there's a road over here. Um, so they call this a flag lot because it kind of looks like a flag on a pole, but we weren't able to put this driveway in because down here there's, uh, you see these little triangles are all wetlands flags. There's a vernal pool here, which is designated wetlands area. This whole lot right here is, is conservation area. But we thought we'd be able to get this in here. We went for it. There is never water in this, pro in this that, that right there is about 25, 30 feet wide. There's never been water in there any time of the year. We've been checking it for years. But the soil conditions suggest that they, what they call wetland soil. So what uh, we went through the wetlands process and we're, uh, we're voted down, uh, mainly because we have the opportunity to use this driveway over here, which is a shared driveway with our neighbors, two of our neighbors. So. Um, ultimately it was a disappointment but this was going to cost us a lot of money to put in that's about a 400 foot driveway that would have had to have gravel on it so anyway we're using this driveway we've got that behind us um, so you come in the driveway that'll just be asphalt millings uh, because it's not such a steep grade we can use millings there which I prefer over the look of asphalt and it's a lot it's about half the price so this is the house this is the front of the house we'll stoop there this is a walkout um, basement with a gable end that will be our living space living room and dining room with windows all the way up so the the ceiling in that part will go all the way up to the roof line over the rest of the house will be a second story loft like a bedroom and an office that we'll probably never use once we get older and uh, <laughs> but so there's 1500 square feet in the downstairs that we would that would be our primary living space over here is the garage it's a three bay a uh, carriage shed equipment shed, whatever you like to call it. Uh, the plan is for a post and beam uh, kit that I'm ordering. Um, I'm going to build that myself. Um, 
the wells up here, the septic's on this side of the house. That's a very common practice because the well has to be so far away from the house. Uh, uh, not the house, the, um, the septic system. This here's the septic tank. This down here, you know, it's um, silt fence. Whenever you disturb soil, you have to put silt fence down here so that any, anything that washes down, remember the pitch is this way, anything that washes down um, will get caught by the silt fence and not end up on a neighbor's land or wherever. So actually I've installed it, it's more like down here because um, I cleared a bunch in here. So it's right here at the edge. That's it, that's the plan. The house is 34 by 44, which I think is 1,568 square feet with the, well, that's with the little six by 12 uh, mudroom and then the upstairs. So it comes in at just about 2,000 square feet or just a smidge over. Um, but like I said, we're primarily gonna live in that 1,500 square feet. First order of business today is we got to grease the excavator. Uh, I bought this thing, I don't know, last year. It's a Milwaukee cordless grease gun. And also this uh, this deal here, lock and lube. It, what it does is it, it locks on. Anyone that's ever greased equipment knows that the hard bit is uh, sometimes getting your the end of your grease gun to lock on to the grease fitting. Well, that's what this thing does. It, I saw it on another YouTube channel, uh, Outdoors with the Morgans, which is a great channel to watch. You push this down and it it kind of releases those and then it, you let go of it and it grabs right onto the... So I believe there's still some grease in here, I think. Let's give it a try. Squeeze that. Locks right on. All you do is squeeze the grease out. See down here? Grease coming out. Good. Let's, I usually like to go on one side, get every grease fitting on one side, and then get every grease fitting on the other. I there you go. See the grease coming out? That's when you're good. Down here. How easy is this, though, compared to pumping and trying to hold the thing on and... I mean, that's no good. That's just... Cordless grease guns, the way to go. This thing was like 250 bucks, something like that. It saves my machinery. You know, try getting one of these, one of these replaced. Even a pin, you know? See that? That thing's, that thing's awesome. Just holds right on there. Grease coming out there. We're good. Right there. Locked on. See the grease coming out there. We're good. One here, which means there's probably one on the other side I missed. See in there? That looks dry. Here it comes. Good. This here seems like this should be, I don't move the blue much, which is actually moving this on here, but, oh, there it is right there. That's a lot easier. And there's one here too, down here. Okay. Greasing was always one of my least favorite jobs until I got this set up and now All right, I believe I'm on a grease you can hear that change in the pitch so Anyway, you get the idea. I'm gonna change the grease cartridge which Goes better than others sometimes and then uh, I Bring it back when we're in the machine Beautiful day, it's about 76 degrees maybe, a little overcast. Whoa. Nah, nothing I'd rather be doing. 
than sitting in an excavator. It's every kid's dream. One thing about sitting in an excavator, kind of gives you time to think about things. You know? My favorite songwriter in the world, John Prine, used to be a mailman. He said, you know, once you're on the right street and you know you know who's got who's got all the mean dogs, kind of easy from then on. Well, this thing's starting to move already, so that's a good sign. Let's dig a little more. Let's keep pecking away at it. If you got time and you got diesel fuel, you can get anything done. Here she comes. Well, that only took about five minutes. Not the huge stump, but pretty encouraged by that.